Well, hi everybody, Kim Winter, Logistics Executive Group, and we're here today on a book review as part of our book review series. Uh, we're a special guest, and Rosemary Campbell Stevens, member of the British Empire, joins us today. She is not only a very well published author, a number of articles, uh, collaborated on a number of books, uh, written chapters for other people's books, but got her own book out and only just published. Uh, in the recent weeks, I'm very pleased to introduce her. Rosemary's a, a leader, ship specialist, she's a speaker, she's got a huge background in education, and as I said, a member of the Order of the British Empire. So I'm very, very proud and uh, pleased to introduce Rosemary Campbell Stevens. Hey, Rosemary. Hi, Kim. It's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And, of course, people may well be wondering, you know, about the, the splash of colour, at least from my side. Uh, normally I'm wearing pretty standard attire, but I, I will mention, as I mentioned at the top of the show with you uh, off camera, I'm wearing my uh, beach shirt today in honour of your ecosystem because you are where? I am in the Caribbean on the lovely island of Jamaica, Kim sensational never been there but definitely want to get there and as you know one of my dearest uh, beloved employees and, and colleagues and partners in the business uh, Andrea is from Jamaica the very same island that you're from absolutely absolutely she's yeah. fabulous as well Kim yeah absolutely yeah, fabulous. yeah. real <laughs> asset there so she is so look uh, without further ado we really want to talk about your book um, and uh We've had a bit of a conversation about it. I've done a bit of research on the book. The book is called Educational Leadership and the Global Majority, Decolonizing Narratives. Um, and it's really when we started talking about it and when I did some research on the book, um, was really quite confronting when I look at, you know, where mindsets have been from colonial days through to today how it's impacted the mindsets of what was supposed to be the majority being the white majority is actually uh, not the majority. Uh, the global majority are anything up but, <laughs> but white people. And uh, you've, you've written about this and, of course, in your fairly deep educational background. Um, let, let's just start by where the idea of the book came from to begin with. Okay. So the book came out of my work, Kim. Um, when I was in the UK uh, for the last part of my uh, career, so the last 20 years really in the UK, I was focusing on educational leadership. And there was a big focus in the UK on the fact that the educational leadership in schools, at school sector, was not reflective of the student populations that those schools served. So there was a lot of discussion around inclusion and diversity and how we could get more diverse people into leadership positions in, in particular in London schools, and then it spread um, right across the, the, the UK. So the book comes out of the work in terms of leadership preparation, because it, we, we then got into a kind of deficit narrative of there aren't enough black educators around who either have the confidence or the experience, and sometimes even reflecting on the competence to lead. And this conversation was going on in 2003 when I'd already been working in the sector for 23 years. So I was able to actually bring a different dimension and say, it isn't about lack of confidence. It isn't about lack of competence, why we're not seeing more people from diverse backgrounds leading schools. It's actually about the system. It's actually about the fact that the system doesn't value what these people bring into the system by virtue of who they are. And that they have been minoritized and wrongly so in terms of who they are and, and what they can bring. It's always seen as something that has to be included into a norm that excludes them. And so I was able to say to people in 2003, 
When I was an Ofsted inspector, for example, in 1993 in, uh, in, in London, there were more blackhead teachers in London boroughs than, than there were in 2003. So what does that say about the system and the extent to which um, people feel included, people feel that they have a sense of agency, people feel situated in the, in the conversation? It's about that. And so let's stop using minoritized language and let's stop using minoritized thinking and let's acknowledge who these people are. They're the global majority. And if we're, go if we're gonna look at the global majority, then let's adopt a global majority mindset and decolonize our narratives around what it is that we're trying to do. So that really is where is how the, the, the book came about. And you might say to me, well, 2003, it's been published in 2021. That's because the program that, 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 that we developed called Investing in Diversity started in 2003 as part of the London Challenge Initiative, it ran for um, eight years to 2011. It did change the face of London schools. It was so successful that it was also adopted um, in Canada. Um, so moved from the University, University College London to University of Toronto, and they called it um, Leading for Equity. And that's where I, I collaborated with John Portelli on our little book called Leading for Equity. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, what, that's the roots of, 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 of why it is that I've revisited sure. um, this, 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 this subject now. Because, of course, they're still talking today in 2022 about the lack of leadership. And so I thought, look, we, we, we need to address this now in 2022 and look at the process that has led to where we are now. So, and before we go any further, as people can see below, they can see here where to buy the book. Uh, Amazon, is it? And and any other locations, where else can they buy it? They, they can go on to, it's published by um, Palgrave Macmillan. And um, so they can go onto the Palgrave Macmillan website. But yeah, they can order it through Amazon um, and, and they can order it through um, local bookstores like um, Barnes and Noble, um, you know, uh, and international bookstores all, all across the world. Um, so, yeah, Amazon is where a lot of people are getting it and, and definitely going on to the Palgrave Macmillan um, website is another place that they can get it. So I want to talk a little bit about the application because you've written this book for it to be read and applied and the, and the lessons and learnings to be applied in the real world. And you've got an international consulting business. You consult to a lot of corporates around leadership in particular. And I know this is being used. I, as you know, I've got a reasonably extensive uh, executive coaching business as part of uh, what we do in the broader sense. And I've ordered a box of them because from what I've understood about the book, it'll be really good uh, resource material for a lot of the executives that I'm with, leaders that I'm working with, to bring into their mindset this whole issue of who the hell is the majority and who is the minority and, and getting the narrative into the way we lead in organisations. Um, so I want to talk to that a little bit. And, you know, I suppose one of the interesting things about what you and I have talked about off camera was as a as a recipient of a very rare and a very auspicious um, award by the Queen herself, a member of the Order of the British Empire, uh, you're acknowledged by the system, but at the same time, you and I have spoken about the confliction that you've you've experienced where you've been into looking to try and change the system and you're recognised by the system. Talk to us about that, that issue. Yeah, it, it's... It's one of those spaces that we occupy, don't we, as, uh, as, as human beings, of, of being conflicted um, and being ambivalent about certain things in our lives. But um, it's, it, I, I'm a disruptor, Kim. I'm a disruptor. I'm, I'm, I'm not establishment. Um, and that's, that, that award comes in recognition of 35 years service to education. But you, you, how you are recognized by the Queen is that colleagues put you forward. 
colleagues put you for, put your name forward as having made a contribution and 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 therefore you know it's considered by the by the palace and 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 you're checked out you're checked out by mi5 and people like that um to make sure that they're not awarding it to you know disreputable uh, uh, people and, and and then you you either accept or 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 or, din- or, or reject the award uh, to be honest with you when i first received the letter from the it comes from the prime minister's office it doesn't come from um the palace um to inform that there is um they they are thinking about offering you the award would you be willing to accept it took me several weeks it took me several weeks to um consider um whether i would accept or not yeah. i was very very happy to accept that i had been um recognized for 35 years service to education that i love i was very very happy to accept that i was very unhappy that that recognition came in the form of member of the british empire the you, you know i'm sitting here in jamaica jamaica as a former colony of the british empire yeah. we live to this day with the reality of what that actually really means to um me and 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 to my people um and so um i was conflicted about having an honor that that stated that but i accepted it because of what i had done to do it to to and receive it, it and it gives voice to what you're on about now i mean seriously i i, I get that 100% and agree with it you know what you if you can utilize any sort of award like that to to further people's narrative and education and understand absolutely better Absolutely, absolutely. And as some people have said, it gives them permission because, uh, you, you know, they they to challenge, you know, um, to to be a disruptor and a creator. You know, it's not just about disrupting for disrupting sake. It's about how we can shift that narrative yeah. um, and and understand that actually um, sometimes people will be recognised. for the disruption <laughs> that they that they that they have caused well you know if you get too disruptive and they decide to take it off you let me know i'll ring them up <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, i've had that conversation as well i have to tell you <laughs> awesome hey uh rose me absolute pre- pleasure to speak to you as i say I, you know um we uh we're looking forward to collaborate with you on a number of projects um moving forward um see enormous value in in what you can contribute in to our consulting business so putting it out there that we are collaborating um but uh you know the amount of effort that you put into that book is enormous i foolishly agreed a few years ago to um contribute a chapter to uh professor john gatorna's book in australia for those who know him um about logistics and <laughs> took me about a year to do it for one chapter so god help anybody writing bookers or like and say but uh, well done for producing that piece uh, again people know where they can buy it and before i let you go um and get on with your day is uh, i want one tip from you as an author uh just to our audience or anybody contemplating writing a book or publishing something substantial uh what would the one tip be uh, for somebody thinking about writing a book that you could share i i i think the one tip would be what is it that you're trying to um affect by writing this book and um who are you talking to you know um be be clear about what it is you're trying to cause to happen and 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 who your audience is and 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 write in that tone of voice it's definitely right in that tone of voice and can i just say something quickly about the book okay. it's very accessible kim yeah. it's it's not a, a a great tome um it's actually a a small book in many ways um uh it's called a pivot a pivot title okay. so it's around about um 50000 words and so that's that's quite you know that's quite accessible for people to read and as you rightly said it's about triggering an understanding in people about the roots 
of our systems and the way that we think about things. Oh. It's, it's not necessarily a, this is how you go about, but it is a, about us understanding who's the global majority. Why is it that they became minoritized and we think of them as minorities? What was the process of minoritization? How did that minoritization actually contribute to neocolonialism in terms of how we look at things like inclusion and diversity? And what is it that we're therefore trying to disrupt? What narratives are we trying to disrupt? What narratives do we need to remember? What are the things that we need to change? And there's a lovely chapter in there about seven women taking seven steps. And so it's, a, it's an encouraging piece that talks about how the global majority can step into their own power and change things. And it's a real story based on seven women. <laughs> Not seven women detectives, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but almost, <laughs> almost, it's in that territory. <laughs> okay, good stuff. And while and while we're at it, what would we? And have you got a copy of it there? Have you got a copy of the book? I certainly Look. have. There, there it is. There it is. Okay, good. What's yeah. it on the cover? Um, cool. Now you see when you when you when you write for people like Palgrave Macmillan, they give you options in terms of covers. Okay. Of course they do. Um, their audience is largely academics, okay. and and so they get they, they 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 sort of you know they talk about the title, the theme, etc., and then they give you options. And I really loved I lo really love this. Thing. It goes with your shirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> it actually goes with your shirt very very well. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, um, educational leadership and the global majority decolonizing narratives okay. is intended to be a starter for ten and having a discussion about how we can situate um, the global majority in any discourse, whether it's about education, climate change, logistics, talent spotting, how can we situate that conversation and situate the global majority within it? Well, you know, very succinctly said, and um, you know, one of one of the things that really struck home for me when researching the, the book and, and talking to you has been the fact that um, in my role as a global headhunter over the last couple of decades or so, uh, the issue of equity, of diversity, um, is really, really not well managed and well understood by the vast majority of employers, I must mm. say. I mean, I've got to say, we're dealing with some global companies and extremely talented and extremely um, well, uh, well talented and, and well educated people in HR in particular now where diversity and equity, both across gender, culture, race, um, are very well understood. And, and it's the, the major clients that we deal with mandate the fact that they highly expect us to come up with extremely diverse groups of shortlists for various MD, CEO roles, et cetera. Um, but generally speaking, uh, in the corporate world, nowhere near the attention and understanding of the value of having a diverse uh, group of people running businesses. Absolutely. And it's about those businesses being not only ethical but sustainable going forward. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, if we don't diversify our thinking around that table, uh, you know, we, you and I have had conversations off camera about the fact that you can diversify the people sitting at the table. But if the thinking is still uh, filtered through a narrow Harvard-esque business school model of the world, when the world is irretrievably being changed around us, we actually need different paradigms. We actually need different people thinking differently, being different, and acting differently. And, uh, uh, and so that diversity conversation needs to be deepened as well as widened. Hey, Rosemary, uh, Rosemary Campbell Stevens, MBE. Uh, fantastic to, to talk to you again. So much more to talk about. Uh, I'm sure that's going to happen. And in the meantime, really encourage anybody, but in particular leaders, uh, to get a copy of this book, to, to get a mindset 
um, understand where you're coming from and, and the issues that you're bringing to the service that quite often are never talked about, very important for modern leadership in the organisations, whether they're private sector or whether they're government um, and all of the above. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our audience for, for joining us as well. Uh, surf's up. I'm heading off to the beach, even though I'm not over in, uh, where are you, that side, uh, in Jamaica. <laughs> but take care. Have a great time. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. And obviously, remind your listeners, they can find me on LinkedIn. <laughs> Absolutely. LinkedIn, yeah. you're on Twitter? I am on Twitter, but 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 not as much as LinkedIn. Okay. And um, they, they can contact me via my email, rosemarycampbellstevens at gmail.com. Thanks so much. Yeah, I don't really get Twitter either, but um, or Facebook for that. Yeah. LinkedIn rules. So Rosemary Campbell Stevens, LinkedIn, get the book. Reach out to, to Rosemary from a consulting point of view. She's wide open, aren't you, to talk to anybody really about some of the leadership issues that you uh, consult on. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get in amongst it. So have a have a great evening. Uh, well, sorry, morning where you are, and yeah. uh, I'll see you on the beach. Thank you, Kim. Take care. Yeah, all best.